Greetings and salutations. Thank you for clicking on the video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an in-place operating system upgrade on Linux Mint. This also applies to many other types of Linux, especially those that are Ubuntu or Ubuntu based. And what we're going to do is actually upgrade the system from Linux Mint 17.3 to Linux Mint 18.3. We're going to give that a shot and see what happens. A lot of people have contacted me since I posted the video yesterday about Linux Mint 18.3 and they would like to move on and they're currently running 17.3 or 18 point nothing or 18.1 so it won't be such an easy upgrade for them. If you're running 18.2 no big deal. Just look in the menu in the software manager once the upgrade comes in and it will be a couple of clicks and you can do the upgrade no big deal at all but if you're running a much older version of Linux Mint then you can't really do that that simply but you can get pretty close now a lot of folks are going to tell you that what you should do is just reinstall and they'll also tell you that you can do this if you have a separate home partition well, if you didn't set one up, and Linux Mint usually doesn't set one up automatically, you don't have to completely blow out the machine and start over. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So this is Linux Mint 17.3 running in this virtual machine right here. And it's a perfectly fine installation. No problems. Works fine. We're just going to try and upgrade it to 18.3. So the first thing that you would want to do is to use some sort of backup somewhere to back up all of your data on the machine because anytime that you're going to do a in-place upgrade major change to the system there is always the outside chance that it could just go wrong and then you would lose your stuff so make sure everything's backed up we're going to pretend that you have everything all backed up so go ahead and shut down the machine and then Take a USB stick or DVD, whatever you got, with Linux Mint 18.3 or 18.2 or whatever you want to upgrade to and stick it in there. In this case, since it's a virtual machine, we can do that super easy. All we got to do is open this up here and uh, then we'll find it. And there we go. There is Linux Mint 18.3 and it's the beta version that we're working off, uh, off of in this video so no big deal at all there now go ahead and restart the machine we're gonna boot off of our live image whether that be a DVD USB or if you're doing it in a virtual machine like I am then it's just a file right and we'll get that all booted up don't have to do anything special here just boot the thing up and we'll wait patiently for the desktop to appear. Wow, that was quick. Uh, no, I paused the video. Okay, so once we're here, what I'm going to do is run in here and real quick, I'm going to make these fonts bigger. Make it easier for all of us to see what's going on on the screen. Make them real big, why not? Okay. So, go ahead and open up installation it says install Linux Mint that is actually an installer called ubiquity and we will move forward English is a good language for us and then make sure that you have that checked right there that is how you're going to get your third-party codecs and wonderful little things that you need to play media and do other things with the system if you don't check that you have the option to install it from the welcome menu later but we may not get a welcome menu because we're doing an in-place upgrade it's in the menu though if you need to get it all right once you get to this screen it's going to make a lot of suggestions what we want to do is something else and then we see what our hard drive looks like and in this case because it's a virtual machine we only have one ext4 partition and this is where our system lives and all of the data files and everything that goes along with it if you installed Linux Mint and use the erase and install option then that's what you're probably going to end up with so what I did was just double click on that 
and now we are going to choose ext4 because that's what it already is and we are going to choose our mount point as being just a slash do not format the partition if you format the partition if you click that and then you format it you're starting over and you will lose all your data that is not what we want to do and then go back if that pops up and then this is being recognized as swap which is exactly what we want it to be so we are perfectly fine and good to go here double check that this is not checked to format if it is uncheck it also if you did install with a separate home partition you can use this method just click on the home partition and then mount that partition at home but once again do not format it install now uh, you might want to make sure that your bootloader is going in the right place now install now and we will continue okay it has chosen the right time zone keyboard is correct now put your information back in create your account like you did when you first started give the machine a name I just call this one test because that's all this is and this is important make sure that whatever username you have on the previous installation that we're upgrading that you choose exactly the same one as a matter of fact make a note of that before you start because if you get this different what it's going to do is it's going to create a new user account for you and then all of your data is going to be sitting over in some other account and some other directory in the home directory and uh, then it kind of defeats the purpose of doing the whole in-place upgrade thing doesn't it give it a password doesn't have to be exactly the same password that you had before but if your username was Joe it has to be Joe again and has to be typed out exactly the same way so whatever you chose before use again and then just continue so we're gonna let this install and then we're gonna find out what happens uh, in just a second here all right that didn't take long at all the system has upgraded and it is now time to restart so let's see what we get <laughs> always the moment of truth and I'm going to show you how to set up a couple of things after we get uh, the system booted up some of the new things in Linux Mint 17.3 I showed time shift yesterday I'm going to run that th through that one more time because a lot of people are uh, very interested in that the feedback that I got from the first time that I showed it was uh, really big so we'll actually do that once again and this thing is crunching and crunching it may have hung up sometimes in VirtualBox when you install something and then go to shut it down it doesn't actually shut down it just sort of hangs I think this might be one of those times but we'll give it another couple seconds here to see what it does I do not see the hard drive light flashing so I think the answer is yes that's what it's done here so we will power off the machine and now let's go in here what we need to do is remove that optical drive now when we boot this we should be on Linux Mint 18.3 with all of our original settings and user files now this is a virtual machine so there's not much on it but I should be able to open up Thunderbird for instance and it should be going to my mail accounts here we go looks like we had a very successful installation because it's booting up nicely and here it comes okay 
So it appears that we are where we should be. All of the icons are in the right place. And a quick way to check to make sure that we still have all of our stuff is just to see whether our home folder looks the same. And there's my bin folder, which has some tools in it. So yes, this actually did exactly what it was supposed to do. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do once you get this done is to choose an update scheme here. And I always tell it to update everything. That way you'll get kernel updates and all that stuff automatically. Less clicking and Linux Mint is extremely stable. I don't see the need to hold back any packages. Uh, the next thing that you will need to do once you click on that is select a mirror. So let's go ahead and do that. So we go in here and let's see, James Madison University is closest to me. I'm not going it, to, it goes through here and looks for the fastest mirrors. I, I kind of made it mad. Hold on, let's do that again. One more time now. Uh, where is software sources? Yeah, let's get that right. Make sure I put the right password in. That would help too. Okay, let's do let this settle in for a second. You see it's going out here. It's finding very fast mirrors near us. And I'm going to choose James Madison University. And down here, do the same thing for Ubuntu. There it is. Apply. We're not going to refresh the cache just yet. Go ahead and just close that. Now refresh the updates. And I'm going to go ahead and just install all of the updates. We'll do that off. You know, I'll pause it for that. And when we come back, all our updates will be installed. That'll keep the video a little shorter. Okay, all the updates are installed and now you must reboot the system. That is the very next thing that you want to do. And I took the time to show you how to set up updates and all that stuff because it is different in 18.3 than it was in 17.3. I wanted to make sure that you understood how to do that. And also, it is very important anytime that you install a, a Linux system, regardless of what Linux system it is, that you make sure that it is up to date. And as soon as the updates are installed, restart the system before you start messing around with anything else. It is extremely important. Uh, that those updates be installed and that system be restarted. So the next thing that you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to install drivers for your video card, your Wi-Fi, whatever you might need and make sure that that's going to be there and working for you and then you will go through all of the settings that you have in the um, all, all the settings in the settings manager make sure that Whatever you had set up for the older version is set up for the newer version. That's important. And also you want to probably reinstall any software that you had installed on Linux Mint 17.3 because when we did that upgrade, we lost all of that. So if you had any PPAs hooked up, if you had any software that you had downloaded, you're going to have to go look for software that's compatible with Ubuntu 16.04 because Linux Mint 18.3 is based on that. So if you were getting stuff for Ubuntu 14.04, now you're moving on to 16.04. So I'm going to go ahead and install the drivers and then I'm going to show you very quickly how to set up probably the most important feature that comes with Ubuntu 18.3 and that is time shift. So I'm not going to walk I'm not going to keep you around here while I do all that when when we come back it'll all be done. Okay, I got the drivers installed and I am currently putting uh Chrome on here just to show you that uh all of the settings are going to be there cuz when I open it up it's going to recognize that it's me. All of that stuff is in your slash home directory and it should stay there and all you should have to do is reinstall the software to make that work. One note, you need to make sure that you didn't use the little tool that is in Linux Mint 17.3 that 
creates a list of installed software and then tried to use it here, it won't work. The repositories are just too different. So just before you do this, make sure that you make a little list of the things that you'll need to reinstall and you'll be fine. And you can just do that uh, manually. It just takes a few minutes with Synaptic Package Manager to select the packages or download what you need. So now, uh, let me see here if I uh, log out and log in, it should show me that Google Chrome is here and there it is. Well, I didn't even have to log out and log in. I just got this one icon that's lurking down there in the taskbar and that'll go away as soon as I do that. So when you see this, uh, you know, when I open this up, you see that it recognizes it's me and it logs directly into my account and we're good. So that, that, that worked out just fine. That worked out just fine. Okay, before this video is done, let's set up time shift real quick and I'm gonna go ahead and full screen this virtual machine and I'm going to open that up and I, I didn't change anything with the theme it's still on Mint X if you had installed any icons or anything like that chances are they they may or may not be compatible okay time shift from scratch we want to choose rsync right up front and we go to next and it's going to scan the system because it's going to estimate the size of the drives and it's going to find the biggest drive that is the furthest away from the system. Now in our case we only have one drive with one partition so there won't be any choice. It's going to put it on SDA1. But if you had your home partition for instance on another drive that might be SDB1 which would actually be a more ideal situation for this program but it is what it is. Okay, so now we need to schedule it and I like this idea of doing these backups daily. So we'll leave it there. So it's pretty much already set up. If you want to do one at boot time, that's nice too. And we'll just click finish. And let's go ahead and create one so you can see how that works. And it's going to actually be backing up the system. And um, I covered that in my review of Linux Mint 18.3 probably went into a little bit more detail that I'm going into here but these are the big things that you know this is the biggest feature of Linux Mint 18.3 and if you're going to do an in-place upgrade to get to Linux Mint 18.3 probably want to know how to do this one okay so you are upgrading a lot of when you go from 17.3 to 18.3 you are upgrading the kernel so you may find that your hardware acts differently Hope everything works the way it should. Actually, my experience is, is that uh, it everything has. I've done this uh, for a couple of clients. We've done in-place upgrades to 18.2 or 18.3. At this point in time, they're both running on the same kernel, which is kernel 410 dot something or other. No problems. All the hardware works. If you had problems with Bluetooth in Linux Mint 17.3, guess what it this fixes them if you just move ahead to 18.2 or 18.3 then it works just fine uh, so yes it's most of the time it's a good progression but if you have like a really old machine and for some reason it doesn't like the new kernels well that might be an issue that you have to contend with and uh, uh, basically that is all there is to this process go through your settings like I said before and just make sure that everything is the way you want it to be. Most anything that you have set that does not require super user privileges should stay the same because that is stored in your home directory and it was not changed. So you can pretty much skip all this but down here you may, you'll need to reconfigure your firewall. You'll need to reinstall your drivers. You'll need to uh, make sure that your mirrors are connected to the mirrors you want to be connected to. Other than that everything should come over and be exactly the way it's supposed to be. Now that's going to take that quite some time and um, all it's going to do is say it's done <laughs> when it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap the video up here. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps because I keep telling people about in-place upgrades and I thought it would be a really good idea to post a video showing how it's done. Uh, I offer no guarantees. This should work. Make sure that your data is backed up and if worse comes to worst, just reinstall because if, if it borks it up that's what you're going to have to do but pretty much every time that I have done this particular procedure to upgrade from one version of Linux Mint to another or upgrade from one version of Ubuntu to another it works very nicely with the Ubiquiti installer and I have never had any major issues so that's it gang check out Easy Linux on the web 
Check out Easy Linux on Facebook if you're a Facebook user, and check out freedompenguin.com for lots of really cool stories about Linux. I am out.